Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and this is the reading vlog for Wild at Heart by K.A. Tucker. <laughs> Hello there everyone, um, long time no vlog see. <laughs> it's been a while since I posted a vlog, but um, here we are. <laughs> School's been super busy, so um, I got some homework done today, and um, I still have to do some in a couple days, but I'm really hoping that I can read this book in the next two days and vlog my experience for y'all. Here's Wild at Heart, here's my copy on my iPad. I. Uh, thankfully, gratefully, got a uh, e-arc of this book. So I've read arcs before, but they've always been through NetGalley, and this is like the first time that I have ever like received an arc from an author that's not from NetGalley, you know what I mean? Like I had to apply for it, and they were like, they, they thought that I, <laughs> I should have it, <laughs> which is, I don't know how they go about that, but like, that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about this. Okay. So if you didn't know, Wild at Heart is the sequel to The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This book was fantastic. I read this in 2019, one of my favorite books of the whole year. And this reading vlog is going to be about the second book and um, it's gonna be filled with spoilers, y'all. That's gonna be the later half of the video. The first half, I'm just gonna be talking about what the second book is about. So if you haven't read this bad boy yet, I recommend you go do that because this book is amazing. Um, but this is a romance book about our main character woman named Kala and she ends up going to Alaska to visit her very ill father who she has not seen since she was three years old and she's maybe 23 now, 25, I don't remember. Her father owns a flying company in Alaska and there she meets Jonah who is a pilot, a part of her dad's flying company and they spark up like a hate to love romance. It's great. I really loved it. Loved the family aspect I think most of all but the romance in here really like gripped my heart and I loved it a lot. I was very 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 excited when K.A. Tucker announced that there would be a second book about Colin Jonah. So if you haven't read the first book yet I recommend you go do that because I'm going to be talking about the summary for the second book. I think I'm just gonna read the summary out loud because this is gonna be the first time I'm ever reading the summary. From the internationally best-selling author of The Simple Wild comes the continuation of a woman's journey to Alaska and a life she never imagined for herself. Kala Fletcher returns to Toronto a different person, struggling to find direction and still very much in love with the rugged bush pilot she left behind. When Jonah arrives on her doorstep with a proposition she can't dismiss, she takes the leap and rushes back to Alaska to begin their exciting future together. But Kala soon learns that even the best intentions can lead to broken promises, and that compromise comes with a hefty price. A log cabin in interior rural Alaska that feels as isolating as the western tundra. With Jonah gone more than he's home, one neighbor who insists on transforming her into a true Alaskan and another who seems more likely to shoot her than come to her aid. Kala grapples with forging her own path in a world with roaming wildlife that has her constantly watching over her shoulder and harsh conditions that stretch far beyond the cold, dark winter months. Just stepping outside of her front door can be daunting. This is not a future Kala had in mind, leaving her to fear that perhaps she is doomed to follow her mother's fling footsteps after all. That sounds great. I guess they go back to Alaska in this book and it's gonna be really interesting because the summary talked about her following her mother's footsteps. The whole reason why Kala's mother and Kala left her father was because her father was never there and like it hurts my heart to think that Jonah might be doing the same thing to Kala. Like I'm really scared. <laughs> I'm super excited. I'm so ready for this. I'm gonna spend the next couple days reading this book and I will update out later when I have read some of it. <laughs> Hello, it is later and I just finished chapter one and my brain immediately got sucked back into this world and this story. So basically, at the end of book one, I totally forgot about this, but jo I know Jonah comes back, but I didn't, I forgot that like, it had been two months since Kala left um, Alaska. And then he comes to her and says like, these past two months have been miserable. I just, I want to figure out how to make this work. Like, I don't want to be like your dad and like just be pining over 
like call his mom for the rest of his life and not really doing anything about it. He doesn't want to live like that. He went and saw her in Canada and like the first chapter is her like agreeing to I believe move to Anchorage with him. Then the first chapter is like her like saying bye to him after that visit. So this is directly like after book one, like directly after book one. She's just saying like, I will move to Anchorage with you to Alaska because she doesn't want to live without him. Like she's had a really sucky time without him. I almost started tearing up because of how much uh, I miss these characters. It's been a while since I've read this book, but like it really like sucked me back into how much I love this love story. <laughs> And it's really sad because her dad's not there anymore and like that's the main reason why I love the first book. Like I want to tear up. Like ugh. I remember bawling reading that. I'm just gonna cry thinking about him all over again. <laughs> so the plane that she's on to move to Alaska with her suitcases, her multiple suitcases that she took to Alaska to move there. Uh, they lost her luggage again, which I just find hard to believe. <laughs> like twice they lose your luggage and it's multiple suitcases. Last time I went flying was when I was like 13. I personally don't know. I just find that kind of hard to believe that it was twice. <laughs> Both times you've been to Alaska, they've lost your luggage. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I might have seen some foreshadowing. I am not sure. But like, a theory is since this book might be like her like walking in her mother's footsteps kind of like going through the same thing her mother went through when she was a kid. Is she going to get pregnant in this book? I think that might be some foreshadowing about her talking about kids right there. I don't know. I don't get what deal like people have with like hating the accidental pregnancy trope because like sometimes that happens like I don't see why everyone hates it like I just I don't like love it but like I don't hate it because like it happens to some people I want to know from personal experience but <laughs> you know what I mean um but like I don't hate like I won't hate a book if it has accidental pregnancy trope you know what I mean Anyway, I'm gonna see if that's actually true. Probably won't realize that for a while though. <laughs> Only uh, <laughs> nine percent into the book, and I started crying. Love that for me. <laughs> oh my god, I can't deal with like people dying. Chapter five, when like you hear like. Calls like talking about Simon and like telling funny stories about him and I'm thinking he's like and I'm thinking she's like talking to Jonah and then all of a sudden she's like I bet you would have liked him and I really she was talking to her dad on his grave I'm not okay this book has already made me cry not even a page later and back at it she found a little version of veronica in his plane and like ordered it and then put the year was born and the year he passed away on it and then put it on his grave this book hello crying me again Um, I'm at the part when, um, she opens her late Christmas present, and it's the plane, <laughs> and then Jonah's like, it's not just for me, your dad wanted me to make this or get this for you, so that you'd have something from him to open a book. Why is this book so sad? This isn't like supposed to be a sad book. <laughs> I'm only 12% 12, 12 into this. Hello, I am now 30% of the way through this book. A lot has happened, I think, since I updated you. I think I was crying last time, I don't remember. Since then, Kala and Jonah have found a house to live in and have bought a house that seems really nice. And Jonah can have his planes there. And um, I just find 
really funny. They have a goat named Zeke and Kala is afraid of goats <laughs> due to like a traumatic past with goats. Like that's how I kind of feel with um, ducks. <laughs> I was chased by ducks when I was little. I can't get near a duck anymore. <laughs> I guess that's how she feels about goats. <laughs> the goat is still on their property and I find it so funny. His name is Zeke. <laughs> Zeke the goat. That's so cute. Um, and then to move there, they also took a bandit, which is their raccoon. They're like pet raccoon from the first book. <laughs> They'll like live under Jonah's house and Jonah like had like a bed for him and uh, food for him on his porch. <laughs> that's so cute. They like put bandit in a little cage and brought him to their new house <laughs> i honestly don't know how this book is like what's going to happen as far as conflict for this book because right now it just seems like a slice of life kind of it's a 30 percent it's always already been from november to february or march so i don't know what's gonna happen with this i'm kind of nervous because like i don't want anything to happen <laughs> to colin jonah but um it's really funny I'm at the part where Kala went on a run and she comes back and thinks something's following her and then she turns around and Zeke is there and she just gets so scared of him. <laughs> this goat. Oh my gosh. Hello, I'm now 40% of the way through. I don't know if it's like a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel like every like interaction or conversation that Kala and Jonah have is like, ends with them having sex. <laughs> like it's happened multiple times where the chapter ends with like a fade to black scene, which I don't even remember if The Simple Wild had fade to black scenes. I'll have to go check that out. But I felt like it was more than a fade to black scene in The Simple Wild. I don't know, I'll have to go look that up. <laughs> I don't know. But it just feels like every time they have a conversation, it ends in sex when i don't know if that's like a a, a, no, a normal thing <laughs> i'm starting to notice that because it's happened a bunch and like they can't just end a conversation the normal way if that makes sense i don't know maybe i'm overthinking this i don't know <laughs> i'm really enjoying it so far it is a little i'm a little bored if i'm being honest like nothing's really happened except them buying a house and Kala buying stuff for the house. Nothing else has really happened. So, I don't know, I'm just waiting for, <laughs> I'm waiting for something else to happen, I guess. Like, I really, I, I want it to be more exciting or something more to happen. I don't know. I guess I'm just waiting for like the conflict to hit because it's almost 50% of the way through the book. Okay, I am just, I'm just around 50% of the way through this. And Jonah has taken Kala to the little safety cabin that they stayed in in the simple wild and like Kala was like "Ooh, he's acting really weird today is he gonna propose to her is he gonna propose to her I need him to propose to her uh it needs to happen please it'd be pretty freaking sad if it did not happen on this trip because I feel like that's where their whole relationship really took off <laughs> so hopefully I'm gonna read about them getting engaged in a second here. <laughs> I'm kind of mad right now. Um, pretty sure Jonah was just about to propose to Kala. She had to open up her dumb mouth and tell him that she thinks she's pregnant. <laughs> I mean, I guess I was right with the whole pregnancy freaking thing. You just fuck like, uh, her whole reaction was not good and uh kind of like broke jonah's heart i don't know how i'm feeling because it's obvious that this conflict i think in the book is going to be about this freaking baby and i don't know i don't i don't i don't know what to think because i don't really like there to be conflict around babies like uh, just because i love babies and i hate there being conflict around babies i'm very frustrated and like if this turns into a fight over this child, like, I'm gonna be kind of upset because I don't want to read about that. Kind of pissed that, um, Jonah could not propose to Kyla because that's literally all I wanted. Normally, I'm really, really, really excited when people are like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. But then 
not in this situation because college just fucking like ruined everything. Her reaction ruined everything, not the baby. The reaction she had ruined everything. If I was Jonah, I'd be fucking pissed. I'm still at 50% of the way through this freaking book. Okay, uh, it's a little later. Um, Kala's not actually pregnant. <laughs> But obviously Jonah's very upset. Like, number one, she ruined his proposal. <laughs> and number two, like, her reaction was just like, not good. I would feel so bad about myself if I was him. And like, not confident in our, in our relationship. Like, damn. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous about what's gonna happen next. I honestly have no idea since there's not actually a baby. Okay, update. Um, I don't even know if I said this before, but this book is going in like, kind of like flying through months. Like sometimes each chapter will start with a new month to indicate like how long it's been. I think the book started out in November and now we're 60% of the way through and it's June. Jonah has just accepted a job to be away for three months in september i like i don't i don't know how i'm feeling about this i'm just like really worried <laughs> really worried about this relationship with them because i don't want anything to happen to them but at the same time like i'm kind of bored <laughs> like i want I want something to happen. They're just like flying or sitting around their house. I want something else to happen, please. I don't know how Roy's gonna be put into this. Roy is their neighbor who's like really uh, abrasive and he has those two wolves as pets. And then Kala ends up like kind of like saving one of their lives. And Roy kind of like finds Kala and like to thank her and which is very out of character for him. So I really wanna know what's happening with that situation. Kinda don't like Marie. Marie is the Jonas like girl friend, not girlfriend, like friend that's a girl, but like she's obviously like in love with him. I feel like I'm not loving this book as much as the first one. I think the main reason why though that I love the first one was because Ren was in it, that's her dad. And like, that's the main reason why I loved it was because of their relationship. And I don't know, there's not that family aspect in this book. And that was like the main reason why I loved the first one. But let me just tell you, anytime anyone brings up Ren, I just start tearing up. <laughs> because um, I loved that man in the first book, so. I just don't want, like it, it seems like this book is going in a direction where their relationship is going to be rocky because he's going to be gone for a while or so i think and like i don't know i thought there'd be more of an impact when jonah realizes that maybe kyle's not ready for marriage and like doesn't end up proposing to her at all which she wants to i guess be proposed to she wants to be engaged i think um also i forgot to say she she knows that he was going to propose to her she found the ring in his jacket and like didn't say anything which is gonna come out like it like it has to, if it if it does not come out like it's gonna come out that she saw it and didn't say anything <laughs> so i'm waiting for that conversation okay i'm 80 percent of the way through now kind of like more flying through the later part of the book i think mainly because i'm more invested because there's more to the story than kala just sitting in her house i like the relationship with her and roy because roy needs a friend y'all he needs a friend he needs some love he's a little cranky old man who doesn't get love and he needs some and like how was trying to be his friend and then he was a big douche canoe and really hurt her feelings and then i felt so bad because it's Kyle's birthday and she wakes up and Jonah's not there. And I was like, oh fudge, he probably forgot and is freaking flying a plane right now. Post-it note on her mirror says he had to go fly his plane. And I was like, that douchewad. Like, I can't believe he did that to her. And then he comes home and she's like telling him how unhappy she is and then dana walks up with the jeep jonah was actually like doing stuff for her birthday that morning like damn <laughs> i don't know what to think of that and then marie is all up in jonah's business on Kala's birthday bitch leave 
him alone. <laughs> Want to know what happens? Because now Cal is like thinking like, am I actually going to be happy here? Is this actually going to work out? I'm just nervous about what's going to happen. I finished it. It's done. I finished the book. Uh, Roy's story. I was not expecting that. Really tugged on my heartstrings. I think I'm going to give this a four out of five stars. Just because I didn't get all that I wanted out of it, I guess. I missed having Mabel and <laughs> Agnes there, and I kind of wanted the conflict with Marie to be, like, resolved better, I guess, or, like, them to actually have a conversation because that was kind of, like, left up in the air. I love how Jonah and Kala actually talked about their problems. I was kind of worried that they would, like, keep them buried for a while. Once they realized they were having an issue, they went and talked about it like mature adults. I really did enjoy my time reading this. I kind of wish there was an epilogue or something, but that's just me and I kind of love epilogues, you know what I mean? Just like them in the future, maybe? Or maybe there's gonna be another book. I don't assume that there's gonna be another book at all. Really enjoyed my time reading this. I was very gripped towards 50% and on. I was very, very, very gripped. Um, the first half the book took me a little while to get focused reading it just because I was a little bored because nothing was really happening. I ended up really loving Roy <laughs> and his dogs. <laughs> I love Kala and Jonah and I liked how we got to see their like actual relationship in this. I will say a, an issue for me was that almost every chapter ended with a fade to black scene which nothing's wrong with fade to black i'm good with fade to black what i'm saying is that i don't think it's necessary for there to be a fade to black scene every time they have a conversation like sometimes they can just have a conversation have a conversation it doesn't have to end in doing it you know what i mean hopefully that doesn't sound rude or mean but that's my feelings. All I'm saying is that I can't give this five stars just because I'm not in love with it. I'm not invested in it. First book, I was sobbing my eyes out, loved it with every fiber of my being. I really enjoyed my time reading this, giving it a four stars because I really did enjoy it, but I'm not invested and say in love with it as I was with the first one. I will still read anything Kate Tucker writes. I will read anything about Jonah and Kala. I'm really happy that I read this. And I'm very grateful that the publishing company and Kate Tucker decided to send me this book. I'm very grateful. Thank y'all so much. This was probably my most anticipated read of the whole year. So thank y'all so much. I'm so eternally grateful. That is the end for this reading vlog, I guess. Sorry for it being very scattered and scatterbrained. I don't know. Um, I've never really done a reading vlog solely for one book before. So let me know down below if you liked this. <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching. I had a really fun time vlogging. Yeah, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.